Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Ronald from the Apostolic Church of God, Seventh Day, coming to you live on Radio Kush Kadri. I'm pleased to be with you here once again, um, bringing you the good news, the gospel of salvation of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise His name. You know, today um, I'm going to talk about faith. Um, faith. I mean, how do we define faith in, in the first point? I believe Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 defines what faith really is. Um, it's important we know what faith is. It defines what faith is by saying, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, so faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen so it means believing that something actually is there and is in operation even though you, you don't see it with your physical eyes that's what faith is and faith basically um, leads to a relationship with the Lord faith is actually believing for the impossible against all odds um, in incidentally the times that we currently live in now, wherever you are in the world, we are facing extremely difficult times, extremely trying times, and these times are getting worse. Um, why do I say that? I'll tell you why I, I actually say that. I say that because all over the West, as we actually know, uh, we've got stagnation of the markets. Our governments, with all their good intent and good heart and good 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 nurture and a will for everybody have literally been trying for around four years now four to five years to try and prop up the markets get things going and things at the moment don't seem to be working all over the world services to, to, the, to the general public are becoming fewer and fewer and fewer and fewer and less and less and intermittently less and less Medical services and the such like are being restricted, reduced. Employment's being reduced, as there isn't much employment to go around. And one shocking thing is you now have a lot of young people in their early teens, in the, sorry, in their late teens, early twenties, and the such like, who are in a status quo that they don't know whether to go into education, training. There just isn't anything. But the Bible teaches us clearly to have faith in God, faith in God, because amidst all of these things that are happening, you know, everyone likes to hear sweet and good messages, but I'm here to tell you the truth of the gospel. If you have faith in God, you will triumph, but if you don't have faith and if you don't believe in God, you're going to literally go down, because when the boat sinks, if you don't have faith that God is going to pull you out of the boat and bring you out onto onto solid land, solid land, you're going to go down with the boat. So we need faith to keep us above the water. So we're going to continue on with the study as we do. Uh, Brother Hion, good evening. Good evening, Pastor Ronald Lake. Praise the Lord. And how's your day been today? It's been good by the grace of God. Sorry? It's been good by the grace of God. Thank you. So God has actually taken you through the day quite nicely, quite well. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And it's faith in effect as to why we're sitting here today because it's faith in God's word and you see the whole world and everything that we have has been created by God was created by God uh, and is kept in formation and in shape and going on by by the faith that God has in the work of its own creation so today we're going to talk about faith as I said keep note of the questions we're going to go through it in a chrono chronological order, chronological, systematic order, and if, for example, there, there's something you'd like to ask about one of the questions, hence that's why Brother Heen would always number each question, so that if there is anything you'd like to ask about any of the questions, or say or add, it'll be easier then, because we'll be able to reference it more and more likely. Praise the name of the Lord. So, Brother Heen, if you can continue as we do. Praise the Lord, and just to remind our lovely listeners, if you can hold all phone calls at this point in time, we will, once the studies have been concluded, we open the phone lines for you call with me. God bless you all. This is lesson number six of our doctrinal studies, and it's entitled, 
faith. Question number one. What is the first essential thing one must have to obtain salvation? Now, salvation basically means to be saved from sin. It means to be made right with God. It means to have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It means to be passed from death to life. It means to be made a new creation formed not after the physical man, but after the spiritual man, the Lord Jesus Christ. So the question was, what is the first essential thing one must have to obtain salvation? For that I'd like to, to quote if he, sorry, Hebrews 11 and verse 6. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. Now the Bible says, the scripture says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. But I don't know Yes, I've got a verse 1 there. I'm going to move to verse 6 now. Um, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So in order to obtain salvation, first of all, you must believe that God exists. Yes? Now the, the, the word believe in Greek is translated also as meaning taking some form of action an action with that belief so you must believe in that God exists and take action that's what belief, belief means and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him you must also understand and believe that if you seek God you will be rewarded in other words you're not barking up a dead end street so if you seek God God will definitely reward you, reward you. so you're going to believe in God's ability Believe in God's strength. Believe in God's word. Believe in God's faithfulness. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Question number two. How can one receive this faith? How can one receive this faith? Now I'm going to answer that question um, by asking you to turn to Romans chapter 10 and verse 17 and also verse 14. So Romans chapter 10 verse 17 and verse 14. And it reads, verse 17, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So if an individual wants to grow faith, faith is like a plant, and if it's watered, it will grow. And you will do exploits in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will even surprise yourself. Now, faith is grown by hearing the word of God by hearing the things of God by listening to the Bible listening to, to what God is saying yes by he and, by, and hearing by the word of God faith also comes through the word of God reading, digesting, taking in what God has to say it's a supernatural thing but that is what actually grows your faith I, you know, I've, I've come across many many people who have actually said oh I do anything to have an increase in faith or well, they say, Lord, increase my faith. But the Bible gives us the tools and the necessary way in which we can grow our faith. And it's basically by hearing the word of God. Put your CD on, have the word of God playing, it will grow your faith. Sit down under the mouth of, under the teaching of preachers, true preachers, your faith will actually grow. Also verse 14, how then shall they hear on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So, so also uh, the, the work of the preacher is also paramount because people will not be able to come to faith unless the preacher speaks. So someone's got to go out and be speaking and spreading the word. The quickest way to lead, lead an individual to salvation is to feed them with the word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Question number three. What is faith? Yes, now I touched on this in, in question number one. Now, Hebrews 11 verse 1, taking you back there again. Quote, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That means when you ask God for something, you believe that, the, that whatever you've asked him for, you believe that you have it, that it's already in your hands. In front of me is a solid wooden table. Now, if this table were illustration, 
if I wanted or, or I felt or there was a need, I needed a table for whatever reasons and there wasn't one in front of me, I believe that there is a table in front of me. I will behave as though there is a table in front of me. That's walking by faith. And then, according to the scriptures, the table will materialize. Faith actually make things, makes things happen. It's believing that something is there, when in, well, well in, physical, in the physical sense it isn't there, but your faith tells you it is there. And then God will materialize that for you, as long as your faith is in line with his will. Continue on, please. Thank you. Question number four. Is a theoretical belief in God sufficient for salvation? Now, all quotes here are taken from the King James Version of the Bible. The King James Version of the Bible. Now, James chapter 2 and verse 19. Now, the question has been asked, is a theoretical belief in God sufficient for salvation? James 2 verse 19 quote states, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. So, 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 just a belief alone is insufficient. It's insufficient. No, you have to do something about that faith, which I'm going to come to later on in this study, in this talk. Let's continue on. Thank you. Question number five. From whom does faith come? Now, for that, I'd like to turn you to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. That's Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. Quote, For by grace are ye saved, through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. So from whom does faith come? Faith comes from God, from God Almighty himself. Is actually a gift but it's also a gift that can be watered that can be strengthened that can be fed and that can also develop Amen. so yes question number six yes please what precious legacy has God given mankind that will impart faith st. John chapter 5 and verse 39 the question is what precious legacy has God given mankind that would impart faith here it is search the scriptures for in them ye think ye have eternal life and they are they which testify of me so the scriptures are saying if you search the bible you know we spend many years studying to get a university de degree or a university diploma so that we can have someone something to show up to people because whether we accept it or not, acknowledge it or not, having that piece of paper, that diploma or degree does set you apart from the other men, from that's the right. other individual, male or female beside you. Because you have something that's recognized and you have something that will effectually and should effectually open doors, irrespective of what the economic situation says. If for example you, you, you know, you're unable to get a, a work with a company, you have enough knowledge and skills and tools there to start your own business. Or, or to transfer your skills or what you've learned into some into another capacity or to teach others so here it is we spend so much time trying to educate ourselves in the things of this world in the things of man but I want to say this to you and show this to you um, the, the, the scriptures make it very very clear here that you know yes the scriptures make it very very clear that we should search the scriptures, we should go through through them. And it says, For in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. That basically, if we search the scriptures, it will actually, we will be rewarded with eternal life. It will actually be, we will actually be rewarded with eternal life if we continue to search the scriptures. So it's so important to search the scriptures because the more we know the scriptures is the more power that God will actually give us praise the name of the Lord 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 we are in praise the name of the Lord praise his name now we're going to continue on as we do this is okay this was actually 
sorry, um, the camera manager was telling me something, asking what chapter, what scripture was that. Is that right? Now, we read there from uh, St. John chapter 5, verse 39. St. John 5, 39. It says, Search the scriptures, for in them you think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And basically, I want to add this, that actually in the Greek it says, Search the scriptures, for in them ye know ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. You see? So so the scripture is a legs that God has given to man, to us as human beings, to impart faith and to build us up spiritually. And we should spend, in fact, more time in the scriptures than we do preparing ourselves to, to graduate for our degree, our diplomas, or our qualifications. We should spend more time in the scriptures because for, it's for a more well, um, worthwhile cause. Praise the Lord. Let's continue on. Question number seven. How much of the Bible should we search? How much of the Bible should we to search? With that, I'm going to turn you, ask you to turn your Bibles with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. Quote, and it says, And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. So in other words, we should know all the, all the Bible, not just the New Testament, but both the Old Testament and the New Testament. Because the New Testament is contained in the Old, and the Old Testament is revealed in the New. Praise the name of the Lord. So in fact, the Bible in effect is, is one book. Continue on for me, please. Question number eight. What relationship does faith have with the Holy Scriptures? But that I'd like to turn you to 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, verses 16 and 17. So the same scriptures, same chapter, um, but verses 16 and 17. And the question was there, what relationship does faith have with the Holy Scriptures? Here we are. Verse 16, quote, All scriptures are given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So the question was, what relationship does faith have with the Holy Scriptures? Well, the Holy Scriptures are there to strengthen your faith. Like, for example, the, the, the Scriptures are all given by inspiration of God, meaning, meaning being breathed and given by God, God decided, and is profitable, or, or is not whether or is worthy for, or is profitable for, or necessary for, for doctrine. Doctrine basically means teaching, to educate you, to teach you, to prepare you for life, for this life and eternal life, for reproof. Now, a lot of individuals don't like being corrected, but the Bible is there for reproof. And the Bible says, in the, in the book of Proverbs, the scriptures say, says, he who hateth reproof is what? Brutish. So as Christians, we have to be prepared, if we want to make heaven our home, to be reproved. To, 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 you know, to be reproved where we're going wrong. And to allow the Holy Scripture to do its work. It's clean and holy work. Also for correcting us when we're going wrong, showing us the right path. For instructing us, telling us what is right and what is wrong. It, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God, now now the man, the, the, this noun here, can actually be transliteration, um, non-gendered, meaning male or female, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Question number nine. Besides bringing us salvation what else will genuine faith do for us now for that I'd like to tell you to Matthew say Matthew chapter 9 verses 22 and then Matthew chapter 15 verse 28 now the question was besides bringing us salvation what else will genuine faith do for us here it is but Jesus turned him about and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. 
and the woman was made whole from that hour. So faith also brings physical healing and brings around physical results in our life. Um, Matthew 15 and verse 28, quote, Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that hour. Praise the name of the Lord. From that very hour, from that very hour. So again, <coughs> faith also moves the hands of God. Faith also moves God. Now, these two individual women, you know, needed a miracle from God. They were in need of a miracle from God. They put their petition to God. And because they believed that God could do it, and that God had the power to do it, God said, listen, because of your faith it's done. Be it unto you according to your faith. So meaning that your faith has a say in whether you receive your healing or not. Your faith has a say as to whether you receive your deliverance or not. I can tell you this. I know that God could, you, you could be under a deliverance ministry from your 9 until your 99. And, and walk out the same way you walked in if you do not have faith. Because Hebrews 11 verses 6 say, and 7 quote says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. It means God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So if, for example, a person does not have faith, then they will not get anything from God. And even what God has given them will be sucked dry or taken away by someone else. You see, we've got a part to play. When Jesus healed the man that was sick, let down through the roof of a building, in a sick bed, into a house, Jesus commanded the man and said, Arise, take up your bed and walk. That indicates that when God has done the deliverance, you have to get up, take up your bed and walk. Otherwise, you'll continue to lie, lay down on the bed of affliction. We all have a part to play in our redemption. Praise God does not do all of it. He does not. He, he refuses, in fact, to do all of it. He does half. He does 50%. And we have to do 50%. So what do we have to do? If God says, by his stripes, we are healed. We say, well, Jesus said, by his stripes, I am healed. I am healed. And I'm continuing to honest though I'm not sick. I'm walking in faith. So faith must have action in order to get results. As I said, even where God has wrought a miracle for you, if you do not have faith to believe that that miracle is wrought, then you'll stay in your sicknesses and you'll stay in your sins and you'll stay in your diseases. And God's deliverance, even though God has done his part because you have, have not accomplished your part, you'll be in the same situation as though you'd never undergone deliverance or been prayed for. You have a part to play. It's very sad, but many individuals believe that it's all down to God. It is not. You have a part to play in your deliverance. You have a part to play in your healing. You have a part to play in your well-being. God does not do it all. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Question number 10. Name four phases of faith. A. Faith that brings salvation okay I will, I will okay so name four phrase phrases phases phases phases, phases or phrases name four phases of faith four phases of faith now first of all the first phase of faith is faith that brings salvation Hebrews 11 verse 6 and I quote, and I, and I quoted it earlier on, but without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay? So faith brings salvation. Okay, and um, Second Timothy 2, and I believe it's verse 15, if you could check that for me. Timothy, two, two, and it, I believe it's a, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. 
2, 2 Timothy 2, I believe that is 15. Uh, 2 Timothy 2, sorry, 2 Timothy 3, I do apologize. 2 Timothy 3, verse 15. 2 Timothy 3, 15. And that from a child that has known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ. So faith brings salvation because a person cannot be saved without believing in the shed blood and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Secondly, faith brings healing. As we said earlier on, we quoted Matthew 9, verse 22, and I'll quote, But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. So faith also brings about individual healing. Because God will not act without faith. Listen to me, you you listeners. Listening, listen to me, all of you in radio land. I get tired. I get bogged down. I get worn out by people who say I've been praying for 50 years and nothing has happened. I've been praying for 25 years for a husband. I've been praying for 30 years for this. I've been praying for 18 years for that. God has shown me that he's going to do this for me and he's done that. But I can't say anything it's physical. Because God is waiting for you to get up out of your chair and actuate what he has said. <laughs> if you want a wife and you're praying for a wife or a husband, God is not going to drop a husband or a wife out to the side. He makes sure your vision is say, okay, he's giving you a partner. He's not praying for healing. He, you know, you've got to physically get up and do something too. You've got to act. Even to become saved, you've got to believe. You've got to do something. And then you've got to come out work, fit of salvation. Not to lie, not to steal, not to kill, not to commit a dodge. Those are physical acts you're doing. So we have a part to play. Don't come to me and say to me, Oh, please, Pastor, pray for me, I'm, I'm sick. But you, I've got a bad leg. But you refuse after I pray for you to walk on that bad leg, on that leg, which is now being made good. You've got to actuate your faith and believe and walk on that leg. Because you have a part to play in order that your, your healing will be accomplished. Amen. Amen? Amen. Or, or your deliverance. God is not dropping up a pies from the sky. He's not going to take your hand or your leg and start to walk you down the road. Or you have to go out after you've received the word from the Lord. Or the vision or the dream that God has done it. You've got to get up and believe and just act. Amen? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. God. Okay, we can also receive the Holy Spirit through faith. Galatians 3 verse 14 That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. I remember in Acts, the book of Acts, the early chapters, potentially Acts chapter 9, or one of the early chapters in Acts. If you could check that for me please, Brother Hill. Which one do you want? Acts chapter 9, Cornelius, okay. I believe it's Acts chapter 9, um, they actually moved out in faith. Is it Acts 9? I think it's Acts 10. Well, first foot to 10, let's go to 10. Well, yes, yes Acts chapter 10, I was close by one chapter out, not too bad. In the neighborhood. Yeah, in the neighborhood. Acts chapter 10, um, Cornelius received the Holy Spirit by faith. Yes. Peter did not pray that the Holy Spirit would believe would fall on him. But he believed the word that the apostle had spoken. And because he believed with all his heart, the Holy Spirit fell upon him. So faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When we hear the word of God, we must receive it. And when we receive the word of God, the Holy Spirit will follow the action. Praise the Lord. You see, Cornelius in his household began to speak with tongues. The Holy Ghost fell on them when they heard the word and received it. So, so, uh, so basically, faith also produces the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now, faith also makes us overcomers. We overcome through faith. This is the victory that overcometh the world. Faith, m faith makes us overcome. First John five and verse four. Quote, and it says, "For who's for whatsoever is born of God." overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith faith is a powerful tool it gives you staying power faith is a powerful tool it gives you
stay in power the power to stay in the race to hold on to the end not to turn back not to look back you understand what I'm saying here yes. that's faith praise the name of the Lord but I what print <laughs> praise the name of the Lord <laughs> go ahead please question number 11 11 by what principles is genuine faith actuated by what principles is genuine faith actuated Galatians 5 and verse 6 Galatians 5 and verse 6 for in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but faith which worketh by love what, so by what principles is genuine faith actuated for in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but faith which worketh by love so as, long, as well as having faith, you, your faith also has also got to be undergirded with love, by love. Yeah? Yes. Yeah? A love of God. A love for the things of God. A love for your fellow man. A love. For, because if you want, if you're praying for, you, for someone that you want them to be healed, and you have a genuine, genuine love for that person, and a sincere desire, heartfelt desire for that person to be healed, it's more likely that person will receive that healing because you're going to pray more fervently because you, you have a vested interest in that person and that vested interest you have in that person is the love of that person so faith is actually actuated or works upon love so if you're praying for someone to, to be healed and you don't really love them or really care about them you're just doing it, that prayer is not effective but when that prayer is actuated or, or undergirded with a true love for that individual as you pray for them that prayer is more, more effective and your faith in those circumstances is more likely to produce the results Amen Also, with the person who is actually being prayed for they also have to believe and have a love for God and have a trust for God in order to receive their healing so there's a two way thing here that's going on here praise the name of the Lord Praise the Lord. Question number 12. What is the evidence that one has faith? What is the evidence that one has faith? James, who was a half-brother of Jesus Christ, answers this question quite cohesively, quite nicely. James chapter 2, verses 17 and 18 says, Even so, if it hath not worked, is even so, faith, if it hath not worked, is dead, being alone. And verse 18 says, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. So the Bible says, so faith, Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. So people who say, Oh, God has shown me this, Oh, this is going to happen, blah, 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 blah. You're going to be talking about it till the cows come home. And the cows come on and be milked and sent back out to graze again, and nothing will happen. You want to hear what I'm saying here? You've got to act on your faith, physically get up and do something. He, that's why James is saying, Show me. Yeah, he said here, he, he, he said, Show me thy faith without thy works. Because, you see, He's saying, show me your faith without means you're sitting down doing nothing yes. with your faith. Yes. And I will show thee my faith by my right. works. So he's saying, when you have works with faith, it's a lot more effective than having faith without works. They work hand in hand. Having faith alone is only half the equation. You have to have works with it to back up that faith. Otherwise it will not work. It's dead being alone. Dead being alone. Without works. It's a dead man's carcass. In other words, it's a waste of time. Yes. Also, First Thessalonians chapter one and verse three. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith. Now listen, work of faith. And labour of love. So work and labour of love. Praise the Lord. Oh, oh labour accentuated, accentuated by love. And patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. So again here, remembering without ceasing 
your work of faith and labour of love. So faith and works go together. Please listen everybody. Faith and works go together. You've got to pray and you've got to act. Take action. If you, if you have faith and you act, that's what God wants. If we take one step, he'll take two. That kind of a thing. God is working with us in this great salvation. We are joint heirs and co-workers with the Lord. Please, continue please. Question number 13. Is it important that we perform our service in faith? Is well, it important that we perform our service in faith? To answer that, I'd like to point you to Romans chapter 14 and verse 23. And it says, And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So what I am saying, doubting Thomases don't get anywhere. You know, I, 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 I could really, really, really lift some people up from, from their collars. Because you have to have faith with work. You can't say this and that. You've got to act on your faith. You've got to act on what you believe. Otherwise you won't get anywhere. You'll be there for the next 30 years in the same situation. I said, well, I wonder what happened here. I wonder what happened there. Because faith and works go together. God wants to help us. God wants to heal us. God wants to do all these things. But faith without works, doing something about it, is dead. It's like praying for employment. Yeah. In my attic room. I'm not going out to look for a job. Yes, I'm not doing anything about it. I remember during the 80s when they had the Great Recession. I was unemployed for a time period of three and a half years. I was unemployed but employed, if you, if you know what I mean. Yes, because you had faith. Thank you. You expected it to materialise. Um, I was looking for jobs cohesively every day. And as I was going out looking, I was prayerfully looking. And you know, one evening I had a dream. One night I had a dream. And the Lord showed me exactly where to go to get a job. And you know what I did? I actually went down there and got a job. And when the people said to me, how did you know to come here? Do you know what I said to them? I said, God's told me to come here. I told them straight like that, God told me to come here. And they thought it was a joke. But I said, no. I said, God told me to come here. That's why I've come. And they were so glad for me and they gave me a job. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? I do. But I had been looking cohesively and collectively, collectively for a job for several years. Looking, 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 looking. And of course, between the time I'd have little jobs, little minor bits and pee bobs that I would do because of the motor mechanic by trade. So, so as a being a motor mechanic by trade, get little bits and bobs of, 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 of traps coming in there. But then the Lord gave me a vision and told me exactly that, that, that I, we lived in Cancer Rise at the time. And basically, the Lord gave me an address down in Ealing, West Ealing, where to go show me where to drive to get there on the road and the name of the place. And I went down to the place, got in my car and drove down there and said, look, I'm looking for work. And I said, look, I used to work for Warwick Wright Motors. I can work on Peugeot, Talbots and so forth, French cars, Peugeot, Talbots, Stillman. I said, we'll be, and they said, we've been looking for someone with your skills for years. How, do you, how did you find us? How do you hear about us? And I said to them, God told me to come here. And I stayed in that job. I stayed in that job about three years um, until after I got married. And then after the way on to another job. That's what I'm telling you. Now if God has shown me the directions to that job. And I had to pick myself up and driven down in my car. I would still be lying down in my bed. Looking for the dobby to feed me. You've got to act on what God tells you. Because faith without works is dead. Alone. And I'm telling you something. There are also individuals out there who are prophetic. And you know many times God will speak to them and they protect prophetic. And then they don't tell anybody for ten for five or six months after when it's too late. And then by the time they do tell the individual, it's all pointless. Because God was giving that prophetic utterance for that season. So by the time they come with that utterance, it's all dead and gone and dusted and over. That's why when God speaks, we have to act. That's why James says, the whole prophet Jesus said, faith without works is dead being alone. He's saying it's totally useless. When God gives a vision, you've got to act on it. Let's, let's move on as we do. Question number 14. Can faith develop and grow? Can faith develop and grow? Now, we've got um, James chapter 2, verse 22, 
and James, no, James chapter 2 verse 22 and James chapter 1 verse 3. Let's look at James chapter 2 22 first. Seeing thou, uh, seest thou how faith wrought by his works, and by works was faith made perfect. In other words, God told Abraham to go sacrifice his son Isaac, kill him, he was the only child of promise, go and kill him, God said, yeah? And Abraham, what did he do? He didn't say, God has given me a dream. What shall I do? And we're phoning everyone all, 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 all running from left to right. No. He said, God has told me this, so I'm going to act on him. So he took his son, took the firewood, took the knife in his hand. He was going to kill him. He took the wood for a fire. I was going to burn him, kill him, and then burn him off of the sacrifice. But God was only testing him to see if he would do it, if his faith, if his action would stand up to what he, if, it, if, it, if his action would stand up to his speech. And it did. You hear what we're saying? I'm saying here. Yeah? So faith develops and grow when you take action. And also, um, James chapter 1 and verse 3, quote, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. So when you go through a difficult period in your life, give God thanks for it. Because it's working out patience. It's working out and giving you a heavenly reward. Yeah? Work of faith. It's work and it's bringing out spiritual qualities and able to develop spiritual qualities within you. Um, see, I've got no time, I'll tell you the truth, as a pastor I have very little time for people who say they have faith but don't have no works to back it up. I've got very little time for individuals like those. Because if you say that God has spoken to you and God is working through you, let me see some action. Because faith without works are dead being alone. Show me, show me, show me that you believe God by doing something about your, 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 your faith. Yeah? And then I will say, yes, I believe now that you believe in God because you're willing to act on what God is telling you. Go ahead, go ahead. Question number 15. To what part of ancient warfare is faith compared? Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16. Quote, Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith we shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So, um, faith is also used in spiritual battle. So, so you persevere. So you believe that no matter what Satan is doing, you will come out on top. That's what faith's about. Know that no matter what Satan's doing, you're holding on to what God says he will do. Do you understand? So if I believe in God, it will, it will keep you firm in your faith. Go ahead, continue. Question number 16. What relation does faith have to prayer? James 1 verse 6. James 1 verse 6. What relation does faith have to, pr have, have to prayer? What relationship does faith have with prayer? James 1 verse 6. Chapter 1 verse 6. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. So God is saying, when you come to him, don't have, oh, praise the Lord, it's, this is staring me. When you come to God and say, God, I, I, I am in need, God, help me with it. Don't be telling one day you come and say, God, one day you come and say, God, I've changed my mind. One day you come in strong faith, one day we, no, God wants us to be steady and strong because if we fluctuate, we'll receive nothing. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You hear me? And if we waver in what we ask, we'll receive nothing of the Lord. When we waver. Okay, continue. Question number 17. What is the faith chapter of the Bible? The faith chapter of the Bible is Hebrews chapter 11. And I've advocated all of those under the sound of, our, of this ministry on the sound of our voice to read Hebrews chapter 11 because it gives a long definition in no less in no less than 40 verses as to what faith really means in action in other words people willing to physically die for their, for their faith people having their dead raised to life again being delivered from the mouths of lion, lions or all, 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 you know enjoying mockings, scourgings um, imprisonment, yeah, delivered from the mouths of lions, faith up to kingdoms, righteousness, gave Samson strength, 
uh, uh, caused the walls of Jericho to fall down. God told um, Joshua to walk around the walls of Jericho seven times. Exactly. On the seventh day it will come down. They believe by faith in the kingdom. Faith and works. In the scripture they go together. You, if you, if you, you, you can't have faith without work. If there's no works, it means there's no faith here. It's as simple as that. It's hard, but it's true. Yeah. Go ahead. Question number 18. What is the ultimate purpose of faith? But that I quote, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. That's 1 Peter 1, verses 8 and 9. And Romans 1, verse 17. So this is 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom, though now ye see him not, Yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. So the ultimate purpose of faith is that we'll be saved and end, in, end up in heaven. For therein, and Romans 1, 7, Romans 1 verse 17, and for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. As it is written, the what? The just, just shall live by faith. by faith. And faith means action. Acting on what you say you believe in. Continue on please. Question number 19. What is one characteristic of the saints besides the keeping of the commandments of God that identifies them as true people of God? Ah, oh, this is one identifying factor as to the true people of God. Here it is. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. So, people that have keep the commandments of God so God's people, one characteristic of God's key people is people that keep the commandments of God and at the same time also have faith in Jesus Christ. Keeping commandments, you've got to do practical, physical things to keep commandments. Yes. And to have faith is a spiritual thing. So the physical and the spiritual. Because faith is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a spiritual thing and works is a physical thing. But faith is not made perfect without works and works is not made perfect without faith. They interact with each other hand in glove. Let's go on there. Question number 20 and last for this study. Praise the Lord. Is there a difference between the faith that every believer has and the gift of faith? So that other, I'd use two scriptures to answer that. Romans chapter 12 uh, verses 3 and 1 Corinthians 12 verse 9. Now Romans 12 verse 3. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. And 1 Corinthians 12 verse 9. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gift of he, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. So, is there, so the question was, is there a difference between the faith that every believer has and the gift of faith and it's an empathetic yes because there's also the gift of faith where God gifts people with the gifts of faith so they can step out and do more than the average believer because it's a gift just like some, some individuals have individuals have the gifts pure plural of healing some people have the gift singular of faith some people have the gift of tongues some people have the gift of prophecy. Some people have the gift of discerning of spirits. Some people have the gift of faith, which is an addition, which is an addition to salvation, saving faith. But faith, in all accounts, must produce and produces work in order for it to be effective. I'd like to close by by a quote from Col <coughs> Colton. Colton, um, basically saying, "quote Faith and works. Faith and works." are as necessary to our spiritual life as Christians, as soul and body, or to our natural life as men. For faith is the soul of religion and work is the body. 
Faith is the soul of our belief in Christ. Yeah? And works is a physical body. They go hand in hand. Faith without works is dead, being alone. Praise the name of the Lord. I hope this study has been beneficial. The phone lines are open on 0208-561-4142. This is Pastor Ronald Lake coming to you live um, from the studio in London, Radio Kush Cabri. Um, and just to say, if you wonder who we are, we're the Apostolic Church of God's Seventh Day. Uh, just to let you know, we, we, we hold Christian worship services, church services, every Saturday at the Church of St. Michael and St. George. The address is number one, Commonwealth Avenue, number one, Commonwealth Avenue, White City Estate, that's Shepherd's Bush, London, W127QR. That's number one, Commonwealth Avenue, White City Estate, Shepherd's Bush, London, W12, 7 Q R. We do prayer for the sick, Christian counselling using the Bible, Bible Saturday School, and it's for children and for adults. All are welcome. Our website address is www.acog7.org.uk. We offer our old services in Wembley and in Wandsworth. Go to the website, you get the details. If you want to speak to me directly, or, or want home prayer or anything like that, please contact me on 07984-465861. 07984-465861. God bless. God bless you, Pastor.